Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and in this case answering the question which one of these three is the best knife? I have the BK7, K-Bar and the Glock knife. I got this question on Instagram by the way it's Furfal 308 the link for my Instagram is somewhere there if you want to follow me there and of course I'm going to be leaving links for these knives as well if you want to purchase these in Amazon it's from the affiliate program helps out the channel hugely appreciated and for my books as well links for all of that there. So people were asking this which one is best people know I speak very highly of the Glock knife so hey Fairfield is the Glock knife better than the K-Bar BK7 versus K-Bar what's the answer to that and some people shy away from the question of which one is best I like to try out try to give folks an answer and at least at the very least that gives you a better idea of what fits you best or what would be even the best knife in your opinion and someone analysis may be entirely different but try to um, make a case for your answer so these are knives that are in many ways quite similar if you look at how long these knives are you have 17 centimeters for the BK7 17 for the K bar as well 16 for your Glock knife and of course you have quite visibly a, a difference in, in size as well it's quite obvious even though they have somewhat of a same a blade a shape and you will have your BK7 being the largest one with a, a wider blade this is gonna be four centimeters and I think it's like three for your K bar two and a little bit two and a half or 2.3 centimeters for your Glock knife and they are different in, in weight as well so let's check that out I'm not a fanatic in terms of weight you know I'll go with a heavier knife if I feel there's a quite a bit more performance but as our basic parameter let's check out the K bar your K bar is gonna be 288 grams of weight right 288 not bad it's actually one of the things that uh, troops liked about the K-Bar's uh, 7 inch blade but it's light for for the blade you're getting now the BK7 this is of course going to be a little bit heavier this is going to be 300 and well, it's kind of tough to get it there 365 give or take 365 grams quite a bit heavier and your Glock knife which is ridiculously light for what it is about 200 grams of weight very very lightweight knife so what is it that makes the BK7 so much heavier well of course you have a full tang here this is going to be making the knife a lot stronger it is in fact a stronger knife the grip is quite um, well well shaped it's very comfortable in the hand maybe even more so than your um, your K bar or even your Glock so that's a, a strong plus for the BK7 but yeah that full tank makes it a lot stronger it means you're going to be abusing this knife and you're going to be taking a beating a lot better than your k-bar your k-bar is a fantastic knife but it has a narrow tank that goes all the way through and as you've probably seen in some videos when people try batoning with its knife if they are not really all that careful especially if you put a lot of weight some people just don't get it and they think they can, can just do about anything and, and not take into consideration the construction the intended purpose of the knife so can you baton with a k-bar absolutely you can baton with a k-bar being reasonable about it so you you hold it you hit the back of the, the spine of the blade with, with a stick whatever but as, as soon as you start putting all your weight on the end of the, of the handle here, there's a good chance of you bending that narrow tang that goes all the way through it's long it's narrow and it's likely to bend so keep that in mind now in the case of the Glock knife not only do you have a narrow tang you have a partial narrow tang it's just a thin narrow tang that just goes out about that far because here you have a metal tube this is also a bayonet so it's intended to be stuck in a rifle so it's a narrow tank that only goes this far and yet and yet it is maybe the toughest knife uh, on the table why because of the Glock plastic surrounding that narrow tank so there's no 100% uh, reassurance on things people will tell you yeah full tank is stronger sure uh, yes um, up, up to a point in fact in some of the destruction tests people end up breaking the blade on your 
BK7 sooner than the tang or even the blade ends up breaking in your Glock knife. Why is that design, functionality, the way in which it was designed? The Glock knife is a Glock, uh, the Glock knife is the knife of, of the Glock pistol world, making sense given that they are both manufactured by Glock and designed by Gaston Glock. Gaston Glock is clearly a very clever guy that knows what he's doing and he knew exactly what he was doing when he manufactured this knife or the the Austrian army. By the way guys, three quality blades made in United States, made in US, made in Austria. Price difference and go check it in Amazon so as to get the latest price but as far as I can remember it's like 80 bucks give or take for either one of these and like 20-30 bucks for the Glock knife unless anything has changed. Don't quote me on that, better check on the links below but this one is a lot more affordable to be honest. And the kind of looking at us wrapping this up what is it the main difference besides length of blade being very similar weight you have a lot heavier knife here and a little bit more uh, in between point maybe this is one of the reasons why the K bar is so appreciated is that middle point between having a bigger knife and a, and a more narrow blade even though blade length is the same, you have that in-between point that's almost a, a perfectly shaped blade. The Glock knife is more like a, a Germanic perfection in terms of only what I need and nothing more. Just the amount of blade length, the amount of blade weight that I need so as to have a functional bayonet fighting utility knife and not a dime more than that. Not a gram more of steel anywhere else other than what I need. Here you have a little bit more of a of a nicer wider blade and even more so with, with your BK7. But what I love about this is how cold and functional it is. Very much similar to a pistol. The Glock knife is a Glock of the knife world, no doubt about that. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. Even when when it comes to steel, all of these three knives are all 1095 steel. If you're not familiar with different types of steel, 1095 is a pretty common high carbon steel, and it's quite good. It's often used in survival knives with good results. That's why it's fairly popular. And I would even throw into this category your your SC knives, your SC survival knives of that same blade length, somewhat of the same thing, full tank construction, a little bit chunkier, heavier. In knife that will take a beating, right? So even when it comes to steel, the Glock has yet a little trick of its own. These are 1095, but these two are a little bit harder. They're hardened to a, a little bit of a tougher hardness. The, maybe I think it's like 58 Rockwell. Glock, it's 55. And you may be thinking, oh, that's soft. Well, no, it's really not. It's just a, a little bit softer. But what the Glock knife gains in toughness because of that little extra softness just blows it out of, of proportion in terms of the abuse this knife can take compared to these two. What I mean this guys, what I mean by this guys is these two knives you're more likely to break the blade than your Glock knife, mostly because of the heat treatment this has and how it's just a little bit softer but a lot tougher thanks to that extra softness. That also makes it quite a bit easier to sharpen. Well, maybe not quite a bit, but you see the difference. The Glock knife sharpens very easily. This is the Glock knife that I use. I've been using this all year for splitting woods for the, for the, for the fireplace, making uh, fires and such. This thing is a beast. If you have any doubt about how strong this is, I'll tell you right now. It is, <laughs> it's a beast of, of a knife. You'll have, forget about the handle and the tank. You're not gonna be mess, messing this up. You have to break the blade. And that's easier said than done in the Glock knife. Do I sound like a Glock fanboy? Man, I think it's the best deal and maybe the best knife of the three if I look at it from a cool headed perspective. I love how this would be maybe better as a, as a, as a bush crafting knife, like an outdoors knife. You have that little extra weight which helps a bit more when chopping, which is something that you realistic may end up doing. Now, does it mean that it's maybe a stronger tip? There's videos of the BK7 tip breaking. It's actually a little bit thinner than in, than in your K bar and even a little bit thinner maybe than in your Glock knife. But this knife, I've been the crap 
part of it is still going strong. I just sharpened it. It's razor sharp as well. I dropped it several times by accident. No destruction test here, but I, I dropped it several times on concrete, chipped the tip, and with just a Dremel tool, uh, a Dremel tool, I reshaped the tip, and I still have a pretty solid fighting knife. Maybe that's its, you know, its essence. It's a, um, a soldier's knife, above all, a, a fighting utility knife. Very much like the K-Bar back in its day, but this would be the modern interpretation and even made by Glock, which I think it's, it's quite genius. It's really nothing very strange. This is a quite classic blade shape for most, for many bayonets throughout history, but it's just so well executed in, in the Glock knife. Now, this would be your, your bushcrafting outdoors. If you're a, a bushcrafter, if you spend a lot of time outdoors doing this sort of thing, if you have, you know, if you spend a lot of time out, out in, your, in your land or, or some other place uh, doing that sort of activity, the wider blade will help you out. The steel, all of these, the three knives have very good steel. The slightly more soft steel here will, most people will barely even notice it. If that, I, I'd say that most people will not notice any difference. If you are more of a knife guy and you know how to sharpen knives and such, you will probably tell that this is a little bit easier to sharpen and it's just a tad more frequent that it needs to be sharpened again um, when using it for actual cutting, right? You will barely tell the difference, but in terms of toughness, I think it's, it's there. The, K-Bar would be that fantastic in-between point and maybe more so of a, of a classic. If you're more of a romantic guy that just enjoys using your K-Bar, sure, this maybe would be the, the in-between point between these two and it is, in essence, the fighting utility knife, right? So nothing wrong with either one. One, one thing I will say though is that the finish, the, the paint job in your BK7, I'm not a, a fan of, it feels, it feels a little bit like sandpaper, so it's gonna be having a lot more traction when sliding through stuff, when cutting, which uh, I don't like all that much. It's not as aggressive in your, uh, your K-Bar, um, it's a little bit um, less traction, so that's nice. And the one that has the least traction, of course, is the Glock knife. These guys just know what they're doing and they went for a finish that minimizes uh, traction and it's just you know, it's sliding through whatever you're cutting. And of course, like all finishes, it starts wearing out, but I cannot remember how many logs this thing has gone through, so sure, it starts peeling off. Keep in mind, same 95, it's not any fancy stain steel it will rust so uh, make sure you, you take proper care of it but these are all tough knives in fact you even should consider the, the sheath in which your Glock knife comes the sheath of the Glock knife is just fantastic man I, I sound like a, a Glock representative I swear I'm not but it is minimal it just keeps the blade in place it's not gonna be going anywhere unless you actually release it and it slides perfectly into your Molly vest or your belt you have good options with your uh, K-Bar. There's lots of uh, sheets out there uh, and there's lots of sheets out there for your BK7 as well. The one that come with the knife, maybe the leather one is um, not as, as practical for hard use and you, you maybe have to get a, um, a separate one for your BK7. The original one that comes when you buy it is maybe a little bit too bulky for what it is. Glock knife just minimal perfect gets the job done so yeah i i'd say that wraps it nicely in terms of, of what you get for for each knife and at least where i see i don't think that any of these is a bad option i mean any of these three knives you're talking about some of the best designs ever made in terms of knives um, you just it doesn't get a lot better especially in this knife size like a medium size knife it's not too small it's not too big something you can actually carry being as lightweight as it is, as tough as it is, as affordable as it is, I really sigh towards the Glock knife. But I, I absolutely see why people would like the BK7 or even the SC knives that are very similar. Or of course, the classic of classics in terms of, of combat utility knife, Kaber, absolutely. The one last thing maybe noticeable is that Ethan Becker was not much of a fan of the BK7. He loved his BK9. He thought, and he thinks, I'm pretty sure still, that the BK9 just was the survival 
knife for him. And I tend to agree with him that bigger is always better when it comes to actually using these knives. But when you want like a, a soldier's knife or someone that's going to be on foot a lot and needs movement, weight comes into place, even though I'd always want to have a, a bigger blade whenever I can. But they asked Ethan Becker to make uh, a shorter blade. Not much of a fan. He said, okay, I'll just shorten my, my BK9, give it a clip point. And he ended up with a very successful knife in spite of him not being much of a fan of the idea. That's sometimes how it ends up happening. Just something ends up being very successful in spite of maybe not being um, much of a as much appreciated by even the, its own designer. Just the way the story goes. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. Keep in mind the links below and see you on the next video. Take care.